Our study is continuing Revelation 11. This is part six. They stood upon their feet. This is coming from Revelation 11, 11 and 12, which reads, And after three days and a half, the Spirit of life from God entered unto them and stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them, which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. This is a symbolic representation of a time in history. And we studied last time about the Dark Ages and that the two witnesses were the Old and New Testament and how uh, it had been suppressed during this time. Bibles were burned. People were uh, hunted down who were Bible-believing Christians, such as the Waldenses. Great Controversy explains this verse we just read. God's faithful witness, slain by the blasphemous power that ascended out from the bottomless pit, were not long to remain silent. After three days and a half, the Spirit of life from God entered them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Revelation 11.11 11. Now she explains, it was in 1793 <clears throat> that the decrees which abolished the Christian religion and set aside the Bible passed the French assembly. Three, three years and a half later, a resolution rescinding those decrees, thus granting tolerance to the scriptures, was adopted by the same body. So we learned last time that this three and a half years is speaking about the three and a half year period of the French uh, persecution, the French Revolution, of the um, particularly the tail end of that, when the, the persecution happened uh, against the Bible as French became a heathen nation and persecuting power to its own citizens <clears throat> who believed in the Bible. And then three and a half years later, the very same political body, legislative body in France, reversed that. So now the scriptures were allowed and Christians were not persecuted. So three and a half years, France abolished religion and the Bible. Great Controversy says on page 287, concerning the two witnesses, the prophet declares further, Remember the two witnesses as the Old and New Testament, the Bible. <clears throat> and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Revelation 11, 2. She explains, Since France made war upon God's two witnesses, they have now been honored as never before. In 1804, the British and Foreign Bible Society was established. One fine day in Wales, 15-year-old Mary Jones sets off on a 42-kilometer journey to nearby town Bala. Her aim? To buy a Bible. Bibles are expensive and scarce in Wales then, so the young Mary Jones worked and saved up for six long years just to buy one. When she heard that Reverend Thomas Charles is selling Bibles in Bala, she is determined not to let the opportunity pass by, even though she has to trek barefooted to get there. finally got her wish, but Charles is greatly moved. How many others are there in Wales, like Mary, who cannot afford a copy of God's Word to read for themselves?
Mary Jones' story inspired Charles and other faithful men like Reverend Joseph Hughes and William Wilberforce to form the British and Foreign Bible Society, or BFBS, on 7th of March, 1804. Their mission? To make the Word of God readily available not only in the UK, but throughout the whole world. The great controversy continues. When the British Society was formed, the Bible had been printed and circulated in 50 tongues. It has since been translated into more than 200 languages and dialects. In the year 1800, a 16-year-old Welsh girl longed to own her own Bible. She'd been saving up her pennies from the age of 10, and finally she had enough to buy her own Bible. Mary was from a poor family, and there were many other things she could have spent her money on, such as a pair of shoes, but she really wanted a Bible in her own language. The problem was, though, the nearest one was 28 miles away. And undeterred by the distance and her lack of shoes, she set off from her home right here and walked through the valleys to the town of Bala. Arriving here in the town of Bala, she went to the home of Reverend Thomas Charles. Today, his home stands on the high street and has now been converted into a bank. He was so inspired by her story that he sold her three Bibles for the price of one. One of those today is in the National Library in Wales, and another one is at Cambridge University's library. The story of Mary Jones inspired many others. Reverend Joseph Hughes asked a daring question of church leaders soon after. If for Wales, why not for the kingdom? And if for the kingdom, why not for the world? That question posed at a meeting of the Religious Tract Society on the 7th of December 1802 would reverberate around Wales and ultimately the world. Captured by the vision of the Bible being readily available in the language of the people, William Wilberforce and other members of the Clapham sect sprang into action. They made this vision part of their campaign to make goodness fashionable in the hope that people would fall in love with the Bible and a biblically inspired way of life. At a meeting on the 7th of March, 1804, of around 300 people in the London Tavern, which used to stand near here on Bishopsgate, William Wilberforce and the campaigning groups he was a part of formed the British and Foreign Bible Society, now known as the Bible Society. In the last 200 years, they have gone into over 200 different countries with God's Word. Soon after this society was formed, in 1816, the American Bible Society was formed in New York City. Later in the 19th century, inspired by Hudson Taylor and the China Inland Mission, seven students at Cambridge University, later known as the Cambridge Seven, gave up promising careers and sailed to China to be missionaries. Their influence inspired many others, causing the number of missionaries in China to swell from 165 in 1885 to 800 just 15 years later, approximately one third of the Protestant missionary force. The Keswick Convention also had a profound impact on mission service, inspiring many people to devote their lives to the service of God in faraway lands. The Great Controversy continues. This was followed by similar organizations with numerous branches upon the continent of Europe. In 1816, the American Bible Society was founded. In the late 17th and 18th centuries, permission to print English Bibles was granted only to printers with a royal license, and the English colonists in America could only import Bibles that were published by those licensed printers in England. It wasn't until the 1800s that a translation of the English Bible was completed and published in America. 
Charles Thompson had served as the Secretary of the Continental Congress and assisted in designing the Great Seal of the United States. He translated the Greek Septuagint and the Greek New Testament into English. In 1808, his translation was published in four volumes, a translation with a depth of scholarship that impacted American Bible translations for nearly a hundred years. For 50 years preceding 1792, little attention was given to the work of foreign missions. No new societies were formed, and there were but few churches that made any effort for the spread of Christianity in heathen lands. But toward the close of the 18th century, a great change took place. The improvements in printing have given an impetus to the work of circulating the Bible. The increased facilities for communication between different countries, the breaking down of ancient barriers of prejudice and national exclusiveness, and the loss of secular power by the pontiff of Rome had opened the way for the entrance of the Word of God. As the dark ages came to a close and the light of God's Word was beginning to shine, Daniel 12 verse 4 was being fulfilled. The 1260 year prophecy which came to a close in 1798 coincided with the words of Daniel who said that many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. This referred to knowledge of the Bible which would only increase as people had access to it, a cause that countless missionaries devoted their lives to. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it and then finally the end will come. I was thinking today just what you would read about if you would get out a file of newspapers for the last 50 years and see what the world has called the significant events during that time. I have no doubt in the annals of heaven that one of the most significant events of the last half century has been the explosion of Bible translation, which has brought the Word of God to hundreds of tribes and languages. The Bible says in Daniel 12, 4, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. We've seen over the years knowledge increasing drastically of the knowledge of the Bible and the spread of the gospel. You can see from this chart that language translations of the Bible exponentially have grown in recent decades compared to prior to 1800s. And as a result, you can see that the population of Christianity has grown proportionately as well and is projected by 2100 to be 4.3 million. The American Bible Society is one example of our modern day Bible Society's work that is going on. We have seen a slow but steady climb of skepticism towards Scripture. There are an increasing number of Americans who say they believe the Bible is just a book written by men. In fact, many of these people believe that it's a book of oppression. So much of our history has been lost. We don't teach the Bible and its impact and how it was central in the founding of our nation.
As a parent, I watch as my children engage with technology. They have these immersive experiences with the games that they play, the ways that they connect with content. What it reminds me of is how important it is for us to take scripture in this environment and create the same types of immersive experiences for us to connect with this generation and help it be a part of how we could transform this country. All throughout different communities in the nation, you see the evidence of disengagement with scripture. And so American Bible Society is really looking to help them re-engage with God's word to transform not only them, but transform churches, communities, and eventually this nation. There are millions of people coming to Philadelphia every year, and there's an opportunity to impact those people's lives by telling a story of our nation's founding and the Bible's impact on that. We have a vision based here in Philadelphia of a Bible Discovery Center on our ground floor facing out at the Liberty Bell and millions of people who come here to understand our nation's history and imagining this place as connecting. It's an engine to tell the Bible story in the context of our history and how it's relevant today. We're thrilled that we have tens of thousands of square feet to invite people in to begin to understand the story of where we came from and why that's important, not just for men and women 200 years ago, but today. To take a journey with us and change the landscape such that we could see 100 million Americans to actively engage God's Word in the next 10 years. inspire a new generation of, of leaders, a new generation of entrepreneurs, a new generation of thinkers to take scripture and these new technologies and tools that we have and dream up brand new ways that people can connect that can transform America in the next 200 years. Another example of modern day uh, expansion of Bible societies is the British Bible Society. Did you know that the Bible is still the world's all time bestseller? In the last 30 years, the world's largest Bible printing press in China has produced over 100 million Bibles just to keep up with the global demand. In the UK, there's no shortage of Bibles but nine out of 10 people don't actively engage with it. Think about it. That's millions of people for whom the Bible has little relevance. We know, for example, that a third of 15 year olds don't realize the nativity is a Bible story. And a third of adults think the plot of Hunger Games comes from the Bible. But it doesn't have to be this way. We know the Bible can speak today to amazing effect. We want to take the Bible off the shelf and use it to inspire people challenge them, open up the conversation. We want to bring the Bible to life for every man, woman, and child, today and for future generations. Another example of modern day efforts by Bible societies is the Canadian Bible Society. COVID-19 cases across our country. Changed. It's all changed. Family, work, social life. It all has changed. But one thing has remained constant. It's what brings us together. It fills our hearts with joy. 
It comforts us. It restores us, renews us, and gives us hope. It's God's unchanging word to us. Where people are at risk, when faith is under siege, to millions craving hope and generations seeking purpose, God speaks. We help the world here. The world is changing, but the word of God remains unchanged. Again, Jesus said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Today, mission service may not be as cutting edge as it was back then, or the Bible as new, but the need for both is still vital. The Great Commission still applies today. There are countless people who have never heard of the Bible and who have no idea what Christianity is. Maybe God is calling you to be a missionary, to leave your home, your place of comfort, and fly away to a different land and be a missionary for God there where people have not heard of Him yet. May we treasure God's Word as did Mary Jones, and may we go wherever God calls us. So now that we have uh, interpreted these two verses from Revelation 11, um, here's my paraphrase. Following the end of the Dark Ages in 1798, God added life to the expanding of his kingdom by making Bibles readily available and commissioning missionaries to share God's word throughout the world. The world watched its amazing growth, and all heaven rejoiced as the Bible was made available as never before. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 reminds us of the Great Commission. Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all, all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. We need to do our part as Christians to reach a lost world because things are wrapping up. Prophecy is being fulfilled. And we can look up with excitement and know that Jesus is coming. And I want to be able to stand there when he comes and say, Lo, this is our God. We've waited for him, and he will save us. And I want to hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. I look forward to that day. And I hope you, you and I both will be there rejoicing when that time comes.